This lens is in remarkably good condition. It's nice and clear, nothing loose, everything moves very smoothly. In servicing this lens, I'm just going through the uh, going through the process for no no particularly good reason, I would say. We'll do it anyway. Friction tool on the front to loosen the, the conical piece here in the middle. That holds this front name ring in place. Here there are three screws and washers that hold the lens capsule and helical into the mount. The lens capsule should just about come out by itself now. There we go. There's our lens capsule. And I'm just looking at the state of the grease here. I have in mind that someone serviced this before because that looks a bit fairly clean. There's a bit of dust and rubbish around here so if anything happened to this lens it wasn't very recently. Okay so taking this apart from the back we've got four screws now these lenses there were a few production changes over the time these lenses were made but they're all put together in much the same way you need to take great note of the order that the components are fitted back to the lens or fitted back to the mechanism because it can be a bit deceptive so separating this all right here's the mount this brass piece you can see here that is the rangefinder coupling that would be used if you put this lens on a Retina 3S rangefinder camera. It needs to be cleaned and lubricated lightly because otherwise it can add stiffness to your focus. So I'll take that apart. Here we've got our different bits and pieces. That. Then we have the shim. Underneath the shim, you have this lever, I'll just unhook it. That has a spring on it, which has come adrift this time. That is a pin here, which couples to this little cam here. Here's the depth of field pointer, that's a little bit grimy looking. It is just as well I took this apart, I think. Here's that small cam I mentioned. This separator, underneath that we have our other depth of field pointer. This little spring is prone to getting damaged easily so I'm going to see if I can get that off the post. It's a very fine spring. It's worth getting it off the post because it's easy to damage this thing while you're trying to clean the lens, the um, mechanism otherwise. There it is, I've got it off. Right. Here, in this case, we have four small wedges that hold this thing together screw in each position. The screw in that position is a post that that spring hooks to. So that means you need a screwdriver with a divided point on it to get to that. I've got one here somewhere. You need something that looks like this. But I may have a smaller one that matches that thing a bit better. That's too small. Now 
this one perhaps. See if I can get that engaged. My screwdriver is not uh, fine enough, it doesn't drop down into the slots. I may not need to move that post. You can probably have one of these uh, wedges in place while you're taking things apart. It's only if I need to make an adjustment would that be an issue. Yeah, this piece here, it, the wedge. It, the screwdriver is just too broad to drop into those slots. But I could uh, certainly go and deal to that if I need to. These parts. Well, there's a bit of graphite grease on there by the looks of it. And it's a bit dusty looking. It's not a bad example at all. All of these components I need to clean with some naphtha. The main reason you have to remove all the old grease is that often old grease has gone dry and sticky with age. That's its number one problem. And the other problem with old grease is it's typically gathered up dust over time because grease is just a magnet for dust. And the dust embedded in that grease basically changes its consistency, so instead of being a lubricant, it rapidly becomes a grinding compound. So it's always worth clearing away all that old grease in preparation for new, exciting, improved lubricants, which always promise to last for a thousand years, and we're never going to know. But you start off fresh, at least you know it's going to be working well for the immediate future. And let's face it, it won't be my problem in three or four decades time. Just making sure I've got that all nice and clean. And the inside of the front here, of course that's pretty much open for dust to get in around the the name ring, so it does. So I'll clean those surfaces too. Check that the knob here is on tight. It's got a single screw that holds that. It's probably needs a little bit of extra. That's fine now. Just go around here checking that I've got everything as clean as I can get it. That looks good. This piece. Well this will have... Same for this piece. You're removing all that old grease because it's probably not as good as it once was. And because it's gathered up dust. Most of this colour is the grease, not the not the dust. No, there'll be some dust in there. Getting this back together is always entertaining because these wedges hold the two sections together. Obviously being wedge shaped, they're wedge shaped for a reason and that's to provide you with some adjustment. So if you adjust the wedges in, things will be held more firmly and if you adjust the wedges out, things will be a bit more rattly. And getting the adjustment correct so that things are held firmly enough but the action is nice and smooth that's the challenge. It's not impossible. Okay, so that's quite good. I'll just pop these two sections together, hooking that wedge there into the track. Make sure when you put this together that the numbers here 
on the focus scale come up near the, the register at the top. I'm just checking to make sure that moves smoothly. It does, that feels very good. So I will clean the old grease off these three wedges and then reassemble these components. Right, I'm just going to run some molybdenum paste around the groove in here that those wedges runs in. They have some sort of compound on those wedges, a green compound. I don't know what it is. I presume it's something a non a, a slippery sort of substance. Probably not Teflon. I think it predates Teflon, but something of that nature. Let's get these wedges in place. One of them lives down here under this track, so I've just got to put that loosely in place because otherwise I won't be able to get it in place. And get this hooked into position. That looks good. So we've got one wedge in place because it's held by that uh, post. And I don't want to remove that post because it's awkward. I've got to find the right screwdriver and I've got to muck around with it to try and get it tightened up if I loosen it. And I don't need all of the screws out. Three of them out is fine. So we'll leave it in place. Let's get this screw holding the wedge on the other opposite side. Now I'm going to check the feel of this to see if it's too tight. It seems pretty good. I'll tighten that up, check it again. The movement is smooth, no binding, that's ideal. We've got this one here which was tucked under that little brass rail. I'll get the screw in that and do that one up. These wedges should be square to the uh, inside piece there. Otherwise, if one corner's biting, and obviously they'll be unusually stiff. I'll just check that action, make sure that's still smooth. It is. It's snug, but it's smooth. The fourth wedge goes in on this side. And you can adjust these wedges in pairs. If there's any rattle, obviously across those those wedges then obviously it's loose something needs to be moved if it feels rough something's too tight and you can adjust that by moving the wedges in or moving them back out slightly that's smooth that that, that seems to go quite well I'm just going to check that again I'm looking for rattle, but that feels feels very good. Not not detecting any rattle there at all. So a little fine spring goes on that post. Getting it started on the post is entertaining. Let's we'll see if we can do that. There we go. We managed to achieve that.
Here's the first of our depth of field pointers. This drops down to the bottom position. There are two little gears here and they counter rotate. This should drop down into the lower position. So it's only contacting this gear over on one side. That looks good. And I can get it spring hooked up over that little hook. And this spacer. This space is between the two uh, the two arm the two pointers. I might give that one a rub with some you've got a soft lead pencil here. I'm just gonna rub the top and bottom surfaces of that with that. That's just applying a little bit of graphite on there for all practical purposes. Just to make sure that those surfaces are nice and slippery. Um, but I don't want to use an oil or a grease there because that tends to go sticky over time. And these, these components really need to be very free running. Because of the way they counter rotate with the gear set there, they are very good at jamming up if there's any resistance at all. That looks good. Now this little cam needs to go in place. We have this little track here, That's that, that cam runs in that track. So I'll just run a, a very light wipe of molybdenum paste in there. It drops in that way. Our second depth of field pointer goes in here. Now the hole in this has to couple to the pin on that cam. And the end should be up against the end of the track there. So I've got to hop this over another tooth or so on the gear. I'm checking that it's symmetrical either end here. I think that's slightly off. Might need another tooth. Okay, that looks right. Next, we have this piece. I'll give that a wipe with some naff to make sure that's all clean. The other parts I know I've already cleaned, so I don't do anything with those. Now the springs become a detached from where it fixes here, so I'm just going to look at this spring. It's not especially open, I'm not sure why that detached, just to annoy me presumably. Let's get that hooked into place. Okay, there it is. Now the pin on here has to drop into that hole in that little cam. And the spring has to go over the same post that the other springs hooked over. And the spring goes around the outside of that little brass fence. And I'm just checking the action here, see if it appears to be smooth. It certainly appears to be good. So I'll pop that carefully to one side. Time I started dealing with this. So basically, I just want to wipe this over with naphtha to make sure it's clean. There may be dust or, or dried grease or anything in, in here. I just want that clean. And the same with the mount, the lens mount part. Now if there's nothing on here in the way of lubricant at all, it tends to, uh, tends to chatter. 
as it moves. So I just usually give it a wipe of molybdenum paste around the inside edge, the outside edge, and on that cam surface there where it would contact the rangefinder pin in a Retina 3S rangefinder camera. And that'll make sure that it runs smoothly. There's very little resistance on that part. Um, but as I say, it does have a bit of a tendency to chatter if it's all dry. Well, it has no lubricant at all. The three little retainer clips need to be screwed down in place. They go all go on in the same direction. And the last one I'm going to put in here, you'll see why they all go on in that particular direction. This last one going on here, you can see that the notch in this is to clear that screw hole there. The other two it wouldn't matter, but the, the parts are identical, but this is the only one that would make any difference. If you put that in the wrong way around, you, nothing would fit quite right. These are awkward to get in place, these little screws. The hole in those little retainers is quite neat to the screw. So the screws don't always want to lead in there smoothly. Well, that's looking pretty good. Okay, getting near the close-up stage for this. Pop that to one side. I've got three screws here. The appropriate thread, but with the heads machined off till there's nothing left there basically but so they're just straight there's no di discernible head just a slot across the top and I use these to help align stuff to hold things in position while I'm putting things together you can get these lenses together without aids like this but there's a reason I use these and that's because it makes life much easier I usually only use three, there's no um, requirement to use four. Three locates things just nicely. Two more pieces here to go in. This shim and that piece, and I'll just wipe them over with some naphtha. Now all these moving parts tend to move quite freely and smoothly but if things are warped or bent or damaged then you're going to have problems. So take care not to make a mess of anything and life will be good to you. Okay so here we have this thing. This shim goes on here next goes over those screws we just fitted this piece goes on next now it's got a a notch on it whereabouts here it has to clear this tab here so it sits on there like that This notch in the centre here, that's on the focus, the focal ring, the focus scale ring. That's got a couple to our depth of field, uh, I mean our rangefinder coupling here. So normally I just line it up so it lines up with that screw hole there. So I know where it's going to be. This piece only goes on in one direction. So I can swing my, that brass tab across to line up with that hole because that brass tab has to couple with that little fork. That looks good and I can lower this over the top over the three screws I've got present. Line up that little brass tab with the focus scale ring. Check that the lever is not trapped underneath here. 
that seems to move smoothly. Now I'm going to check, I'm holding this carefully between finger and thumb, I'm checking to see if the depth, depth of field pointers come together in the middle evenly, and they do. So that's all good. Now we've got four screws that hold this together. Of course we've got one of the holes, three of the holes are filled up at the moment with those screw posts that I put in there. The one that's open, I'll put a screw in there and do it up. I'll back out the other screws, replace them with the correct screws, and that's it, that's together. Of course this was in uh, quite good functional condition when I started. And it's nice and smooth now. The action of the depth of field point is it's nice and smooth. Everything moves easily. So that's exactly as I need it to be. And the lens capsule itself I've got to deal with next. And with the lens capsule, my concern there will be... There are three things to concern yourself with. One is the state of the glass. Do you need to dismantle the capsule in order to clean the glass internally? Or does it only need the outside surfaces cleaned? In this case I think the glass is quite good. One would be the state of the diaphragm. Is this, does the diaphragm look like it's oily? Does it look like it's sticky at all? If it is, you might have to deal with that. And the third thing is the helical. The helical thread here What's that like? Well, the grease is a little bit old and sticky, so I'm going to clean, clean all that away and replace that with something fresh. So I'm just using some naphtha on a cotton bud here. You can see that grease is a little bit dark. There's a, certainly an element of dust in that grease. So I need to clean the outside of the, the outer helical here. This is cleaning quite easily. And the lens body itself. Some of this grease here is quite hard and dry. The rest of it is um, quite runny. Whether that indicates two generations of a grease, I don't know. Um, sometimes people, when they particularly if they're in a hurry, uh, will not properly clean things before they re-lubricate them. If they think something's a bit stiff, they may just apply some fresh grease over the top of whatever filth happens to be there to start off with. Which probably has a positive effect, or well, they wouldn't do it at all. But it's a long way from ideal. Alright, so I've got that clean. I'm just checking the action of the helical, checking that it's smooth. Feels pretty good to me. Yeah, certainly, um, certainly no problem there. And I will use some helical grease on that helical. Got some here. This is uh, Halimax XP. Optical and Instrument Helical Grease, it's called. It's a white uh, lithium based grease. Very smooth. Just run that backwards and forwards to distribute that grease. That feels very good. 
Okay. Now I've got to get my lens capsule back in. I'm not going to take this lens apart because there's no the glass inside is very good. There's a little bit of dirt on the outside glass, but that'll be easy to clean. Putting the lens capsule back in. There are two points here. The tab that opens the diaphragm and the alignment slot here that lines up with the post in the mount. I put a touch of molybdenum paste in both of those. I've just removed the outer helical to make this easier to get at. What I've got to do is get the tab here in the mount lined up with the tab here, this fork here, and line up the body here with that rail that you see right there. And it can be done. Um, with This is the f2.8 lens, it's it, quite easy to do. The f1.9 lens, the bigger one, that's more awkward. Um, I've got other tricks for getting around that one. But this one will normally go, so I'm just looking to see if I've got that lined up. Normally you have to have a couple of goes at this to get it right. Where is that? That's around there somewhere. Okay, let's see if we've achieved it. Yeah, okay, so the aperture opens and closes. That's all sitting there nicely. Now don't put that down on the bench because it, there's nothing holding it. It'll just pop straight back out and undo your good work of aligning that uh, piece. So I normally set that to infinity, make sure the lens is fairly well back in there, that's great. We've got our three washers and screws that hold this together at the front. When the lens is set to the infinity position, the lens is well back in the mount. When the lens is set to the close-up position, the lens pulls forward in the mount. It's further away from the film plane. So as long as the lens isn't hard back against the mount, and the lens is set to infinity, then you're probably going to have free movement of the focus scale and then the adjustments can be made once it's on the camera. With an SLR camera like the Reflex S, once you've confirmed that the focus at the film plane and the focus at the focus screen match, then you can make your adjustment of the focus of the lens simply by viewing it on the focus screen in the finder, which is always considerably easier than trying to do it at the film plane. Okay, so that's all together. And I'll put that in the camera body and check my focus adjustment. So I will just make sure that's open up to f2.8 and I will cock the shutter and look out the window and check that against an infinity target. That doesn't focus all the way to infinity so I know that lens needs to go back further in the mount so I need to slacken off my three screws, revolve my outer helical here slightly, retighten my three screws and check again. That's nearly it, but not quite. I'm 
try there. Of course, you could scribe lines on here before you take it apart, but given that there's a very multi-start thread in there, you'd have to start it in the right place before you put it back together, which would be tedious, to say the least. And since there's a very real possibility that you're going to need to make some adjustment because it wasn't quite correct before you started, that would only ever give you a starting point from where to make your adjustments. Now right there is spot on for infinity and I'm slightly away from it on the scale so I'm going to slacken my three screws. Move the focus scale around to the end of its stop, to the infinity position. Tighten the three screws back up. And my lens should be set correctly. And that appears to be the case. So that's good. That part's done. Check my three screws. You don't need to go mad doing them up, they just need to be nipped up. You not these, this wouldn't be a great problem, but certainly some lenses when you go crazy doing up screws like that, you end up distorting something and then instead of the action moving smoothly as it should do, it goes all hard and bumpy. Right, so that's that. This is our conical piece in the centre, which screws in place. I'm running this down with a toothpick, not the end of the tweezers, not with a screwdriver, and not with any other tool. I do not want to scratch it. I've got a friction tool here. Put it on the centre, quick tighten, that's done. So our lens is good. It only requires to be have the outside glass surfaces cleaned. So with a bit of glass cleaner, blow that dust off. That glass is actually quite good. There was just a bit of dust sitting on there more than anything else. That looks good. And I'll do the same for the rear group. Start with a fresh cotton bud, moistened with a bit of glass cleaner. By angling this to the window, I can see if there are any smears on the glass. It all looks very good. And that is our Retina Reflex S. All good to go back to its owner. Lens and body all cleaned and serviced. Replaced the prism because the prism was shot. Replaced the meter with the meter from the parts camera that the uh, camera owner gave me along with this body. So that one can go back. And I think this one's going to Austria. But don't quote me on that. Thanks for watching.